So what are some of like the cultural differences between, I guess, the American market and the Korean market that you saw maybe America moving into? But just like, I think when I think about beauty and the only, and I know I'm a guy and so there's like no reason I should know anything about this to some extent, but we've had countless uh, companies similar to yours uh, on our podcast. And, and when I, you know, I acknowledge, I know I'm, I'm basically like someone who's done some level of research, but that's about it. But when I think about the American beauty market, I think a lot of people instantly think makeup and glamour. And this is like this, this, you have to appeal to a certain look where it's like, this is what we want you to look like for reasons that are unknown to me. And in the Korean market, is the pressure the same? Is it very different? Is it skincare one, makeup two? What is, what are some of sort of like the, the biggest differences between these two markets? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, and it is our sort of mission to narrow the gap between the two markets because the consumers are very different. I will say the first thing that is really different is the approach to skincare. And I do think that the gap is becoming narrow and narrower and things are becoming a little more similar than it used to be five, six years ago. But when we first started, we realized that, you know, all of the learnings that we've had since our childhood from our mothers and grandmothers and sort of the cultural angle towards beauty in Korea was taking a holistic approach. So, you know, for example, when you're doing your skincare, it's all about kind of checking in with your skin and seeing how you feel on that specific day, because the belief is that your skin condition changes every single day. So the approach to skincare is very holistic, but also customized for each person. And a lot of consumers in Korea have a lot of products in their medicine cabinet, but it doesn't mean that they're using all of those products. They're actually having more choices so that each and every day, depending on how their skin feels, they're giving it that tailored routine. Versus when we came to, you know, really understanding the U.S. market, you know, the first thing we went is go to some stores and, and see how we could interact with the um, beauty advisors in the stores. And they would come to you and ask, hey, what's your skin type? And if you think about it, there are four different skin types in sort of a big category, which is oily, you know, normal combination skin and dry you know, you're not one of the four there's, you know, you could have dry patches, but you could have an oily T-zone or you could have large pore concerns, but then you have dry flakes all over your skin. You know, everyone can have a different sort of skin day, right? But we realized that it was quite formulaic. So when you say you have oily skin, then automatically there's a recommendation for oily skin type only. Then that wouldn't necessarily work when you have, you know, again, dryness that you're seeing across your face, right? And some days, so we realized that was one opportunity in terms of philosophy that we could narrow the gap and educate our customers on our approach and how it works, because it's kind of like an extension of your body, right? When your body feels extra tired or dehydrated, you're going to give it what it needs, you know, supplements, water, more sleep, more rest. If you're also going through a mental sort of, you know, situation, your skin will reflect that. And in Korea, there's actually a saying that your skin reflects your mental condition, and so that's kind of the difference, right? Um, and if you think about it, it all makes sense. We just kind of never really had that uh, approach before. And, and then the second point was how Americans, especially, we here love instant gratification results. We want to see things happen quickly. So a lot of the claims around packaging for a lot of the efficacious products were all about reduce wrinkles, repair, you know, the damages. And some of the language was really strong and, you know, maybe it's dramatic, but a lot of the focus was on repair versus in Korea, the focus is more on prevention. It's a very fundamental difference. And that's why from a young age, a lot of Koreans were educated to hydrate their skin, cleanse their skin right after coming home from school, <laughs> making sure that all of the debris and grime are completely gone as you're coming home. As soon as I remember my mom still to this day, whenever she sees me and she, you know, she sees me from coming home from office or school, she would say, okay, don't even sit on the couch, like go wash your face first. Like it was always just such an instilled thing. I couldn't even eat my sandwich. Like I literally had to wash my face and feel clean first. And because of that, that's kind of what I do every single day too, and take the most time to cleanse the face. So I think, you know, things like that, that actually do make a huge difference, right? In the long run, because if you are thinking about the preventative approach, 
and hydrating your skin, cleansing it, applying SPF every day, those will you know, protect your skin from further damages down the road. So I think now, I think a lot of the Americans and the global audience is kind of focusing on prevention a little bit more, but there's still you know, the gap to narrow down a little bit more. Yeah, you're totally right. Here in America, we're very much, uh, we want to put you in a bucket. And so we want to say, oh, you're thirsty. Here are your options, right? It's like seltzer water, regular water, no water. And then and then it makes it easier for the consumer. We, we basically, the way I look at it here is like, we really give the consumer very little credit. It's like, of course they can't free think. We'll just diagnose them and then we'll give them the solution. 